What up everyone? It's Friday, so let's do this. Alright, so today's question comes in from Mel about Google Places, which is actually formerly known as Google Local Business Center, um, and she's asking, how do you optimize listings inside Google Places? So basically, what I'm going to be showing you is how you can actually get your business listed right over here. So the first thing you have to do is actually sign up for Google Places, and you could do so by going to uh, www.google.com forward slash places and if you already have a Google account you could sign in with that or you could sign up now so the first time you do sign in and I'll just sign in with one of my accounts here you're pretty much gonna see this screen that's gonna say claim your business listing it's free and just follow the step-by-step -step instructions list your business and go ahead and complete the forms um, and then once you're done you'll have your your business listed inside Google now it's very important that when you actually complete this form you do provide accurate information Google does ask you to verify your business listing and, and they could do that through different methods the most common way now is through um, they send you a direct message to your mobile device with some type of code but you'll see what I mean when you actually complete the form but to actually get listed for now your keyword phrases, so if you want to rank for a dentist in Toronto or a hair salon in San Diego, how do you actually tell Google, well, this is what my business is about, and, and, and obviously beat out all the other people that are already on that map? So, number one, the, the, the easiest way to do this is to actually complete your Google profile inside your map listing. So, the more information you tell Google, the more likely that they're actually going to uh, list you on top of the search engine for that specific phrase. So once you're actually completing the form, this is what it should kind of look like. Um, you're able to define the country, your company name, your street address, your town, um, your email address associated with your company, your website, and all this other good stuff that you see on the screen over here. Um, inside the description tag, it's very important that you obviously start listing and thinking about keyword phrases that people might search for that you'd want to get listed for, because this is one way how Google determines if you're going to be listed for that um, phrase. So if, if you wanted to be coming up for a, a dentist inside uh, Atlanta, you'd want to make sure inside the description you, you write the phrase dentist in Atlanta. It's, it's quite important. And then inside the categories, again, you want to make sure that you select relevant categories uh, that are applicable to your business or your market. So Google, again, has an understanding of what your business is really about. So if you actually scroll down the list over here, and you could see that now you're able to provide Google some additional details about your business. And as I mentioned this before, the more content or the more information you're telling Google about your business, the more likely you're going to be ranked higher um, and show up inside that map listing. So let them know what your hours of operations are. Let them know your payment options. If you have any photos, if you have any videos, go ahead and, and, and put in as much details as you could because that's going to overall increase your score. Um, and to see what your score looks like, once you're actually done your listing and you hit submit, on the right hand side over here, you'll see a screen that says your business information and it tells you what percentage of your profile you've completed. So you could over, you could see over here, this is just actually a test one that we're just creating to play around with, but you can see it's 100% complete. So we're giving Google all the information that they want. Now, to get 100%, it gets a little tricky because it's just to kind of explain what I mean by that, I've created a quick pie chart that shows you what information that you populate as to what percentage that equates to in terms of the full completion of your profile. So if you want to get 100%, like I said, here's kind of the general way of how to do so. If you fill in your field, your company, your town, and all that, that beginning, beginner stuff, you automatically have 40%. You put in your email address, that's an additional 5%. You put in a website, that's an additional 10%. You put in a description, and 5%. Hours of operation, 5%. Payment options, so I mean, even if you check some of them, you get 5%, and you can see how this stuff adds up. Now, you're able to upload photos and videos, and this is where it gets a little tricky, but I'll try to keep this very simple. If you upload one photo, you get 5%. If you upload another photo, you get an additional 2% towards the completion of your profile. Um, and your third photo that you upload, you could get up to 6% for that third photo. Now, the reason why I say 6% is because if you've 
already uploaded videos, or if you or, uh, upload a video, you don't get a full 6%. Then you just get like 1% or something along those lines. So that th this number will change depending on if you only upload photos, or if you uploaded photos and videos, or if you only uploaded videos. So all, all these numbers will change slightly, but this is kind of based on what I was playing around with and trying to figure out what, what is what, um, the kind of percentages to go by. What's very interesting is when you actually upload a video to complete your profile, you actually lose 4% um, towards the completion of your profile. So it's kind of strange the way it works right now. Um, but that's what it is. So if you upload one video, you want to make sure that you do have more videos to, to work. Otherwise, you're not going to hit that 100% completion rate. So uploading one video will get you a negative 4%. Um, so let's pretend you're at 90% and you upload a video, it's going to drop down to 86 and then if you upload your second video, you can see over here, you get 2%. So you go from 86% to 88%. And just to kind of prove to you that I'm not making these numbers up, let me just quickly jump to my screen over here. And again, over here on the right-hand side, you can see that my com our completion ratio is 100%. So I am going to go into our account. Um, and you can see over here I've got three images uploaded and I've got no video. So let me go in here and just populate a video. So I'm just going to select a random video off of YouTube, copy the address, and paste it in here. Hit Add Video. Now this video has been added. If I look back at my profile, and because I haven't refreshed the screen, it still shows 100%. If I hit F5, take a look at this. And now in this particular case, now it's dropping 9% because I've uh, again, I told you the numbers will fluctuate depending on what else I've done. So all of a sudden I lose 9% because I've only uploaded one video. And of course, if I upload my second video now, and let me just show you, well, let me first again remove this video. I'll remove it. And again, if I go back and refresh it, now all of a sudden it jumps back to 100%. So let's add that video once more. And just to go back, refresh, it's at 91, we know that. Let me add in some random other video. I'm just going to click on this video here and hit share, copy this URL, and go ahead and paste it in, add video. So now I've got two videos added to my profile. If I go back to my, my overall completion and I hit F5 to refresh the page, it goes from 91 to 93%. So that's why, just going back to this, this uh, table I created over here, um, again, it's not 100% accurate because there's so many different variables as to how these numbers could change. Clearly, just in the example I showed you, just adding one video could actually drop your, your completion 9%. Um, so it's even more than 4% because that just depends on what else you've completed or haven't completed on your profile. Um, so having that said, I mean, if you have 100% completion, that's great. Do you need to have 100% to get listed on the Google Maps? No. So to summarize how to get your business inside Google Maps or Google Places uh, and achieve a higher ranking, you want to, number one, submit your business to Google Places. Number two, you want to make sure you put accurate information and put your keyword phrase inside your description and the relevant categories. Three, you want to try to get your profile completed to at least 100% or closest to 100%. And finally, the last thing, if you've already done all that stuff and you're still not appearing high in the rankings, you want to get customer reviews. Uh, the more people that are writing reviews about your company, the more likelihood that Google is going to rate you higher. And again, it doesn't necessarily mean if you've got more reviews, you're going to beat up the next guy underneath you. This is one of the many factors Google takes looks at. And there you have it. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh yeah, one more thing. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe below. Um, in case you missed my video on Facebook privacy, uh, you can watch it right over here. And if you want to be found in Google, don't forget to watch this video over here. Thanks again, guys. Bye.